So far in this series, we've explored both text-to-image and image-to-image -image workflows using SDXL-based models and Flux. If you missed any of that, make sure to check out the previous episodes in the playlist. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to use LoRa's in both SDXL and Flux workflows. Let's dive in. LoRa stands for Low Rank Adaptation. In AI image generation, it's a method for fine-tuning models to new styles. The big advantage of LoRa's is that you don't need to train an entirely new model from scratch, which is expensive and resource intensive. Instead, you can take any existing model and tweak parts of it to nudge it in a specific direction. With LoRa's, you can fine-tune models to specialize in generating images of objects, characters, or unique art styles. You can either train LoRa's yourself or download pre-trained ones from sites like Hugging Face or Civit AI. LoRa's, like other AI models, often come as TensorFlow files that you can download and use directly in ComfyUI. Let me show you how to find LoRa's. Head over to the Civit AI website, click on Models, then use the filter at the top right to select LoRa. This will show you all available LoRa's. Keep in mind, LoRa's are always trained on a specific base model and work best with that model. So if you're using an SDXL workflow, pick LoRa's trained on SDXL. If you're using Flux, choose a LoRa trained on Flux. You can filter by base model using the filter function as well. You'll notice on the Civit AI cards what types of images each LoRa generates. For example, you might see one specialized in Disney princesses, which will make all your images look like Disney princesses. Another might be anime-based, and another might create pixel art. There's a huge variety available. Today we're going to use the Dissolve LoRa, which creates unique dissolve effects in your images. It has several versions. One trained on SDXL, which we'll use first, and another for Flux, which we'll try later. One very important thing, pay attention to the trigger words for each LoRa. The trigger is a phrase you must include in your prompt to activate the LoRa in your ComfyUI workflow. I'll show you how to use it later, but just remember to note the trigger. In this case, it's RAL Dissolve. If you're running ComfyUI locally, download the file and place it in your ComfyUI folder under Models, then LoRa. If you're running ComfyUI in the cloud, like I am with Lightning AI because I don't have enough GPU power locally, you'll need to construct a URL from the model download link. For details, check episode one of this series or the written version of this tutorial in the description. I've also included links to all the workflows we're using today in that article if you want to download them. Now that we have both LoRa models ready, let's see how to use them in our workflows. We will start with a text-to-image SDXL workflow. I've generated an image of a knight on a chessboard, and for demo purposes, I'll use a fixed seed so we can clearly see the effect of the LoRa. First, go to the node library and search for a LoRa node. The one we want is called Load LoRa. Drag it onto the canvas. So where should we place this node? You'll see it has a model input and output and a clip input and output. The only other nodes with model input or output are the load checkpoint node and the k-sampler node. So you'll want to place your load LoRa node somewhere between those. Connect it to the appropriate inputs and outputs. Next, look at the clip inputs and outputs. These are available in the Load Checkpoint node and the Clip Text nodes used for positive and negative prompts. Connect your new Load LoRa node to both the Load Checkpoint node and your positive and negative prompts. If things get messy, rearrange your nodes for better visibility. Now select the correct LoRa, the Dissolve for SDXL LoRa. Remember the trigger word from earlier? You'll need it now. The only thing I'm changing is adding the trigger to the positive prompt. Everything else stays the same, and I've fixed the seed. Now, let's test our image generation. As you can see, the image now shows the knight on the chessboard dissolving. You can try different prompts and settings, but always include the trigger word in your prompt. Before moving on to image to image, let's look at the settings available in the Load LoRa node. 
the strength model parameter controls how strongly the LoRa modifies the diffusion model, the U-net. The U-net is the core of the stable diffusion model responsible for turning noise into a coherent image. A higher value, like one or above, means the LoRa's visual characteristics are applied more intensely. A lower value, like 0.5, applies the effect more subtly. The strength clip parameter controls how much the LoRa modifies the clip model, which handles text encoding. If a LoRa includes text encoding training, which is common for LoRas that use trigger words, increasing strength clip boosts the influence of those trigger words on generation. It adjusts how much the LoRa's learned associations between text and images override the base model's understanding. Play around with these parameters and experiment for yourself. I find that lower strength clip values, around 0.5 or less, can yield better results. You can do the same thing with image-to-image -image SDXL workflows. Just make sure you place the Load LoRa node after the Load Checkpoint node and connect it to the Load Checkpoint node, the positive and negative prompts, and the K-Sampler node. Don't forget to set the trigger word in the positive prompt before generating. As before, you can adjust the LoRa node settings to get different results. Here you can see a Flux workflow where I added the Load LoRa node in the same spot. Make sure you select the right LoRa for Flux and add the trigger to the prompt. That's how you use LoRas in ComfyUI for both SDXL and Flux workflows. Try it out for yourself, experiment with different LoRas and settings, and see what creative effects you can achieve. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.